I'm the why guy. I don't know why you do what you do. What is your motive for action? What is it that drives you in your life today, not 10 years ago, or are you running the same pattern? Because I believe that the invisible force of internal drive activated is the most important thing in the world. I'm here because I believe emotion is the force of life. All of us here have great minds. You know, most of us here have great minds, right? I don't know if I'm in the category, but we all know how to think. And with our minds, we can rationalize anything. We can make anything happen. We can, uh, I agree with what was described a few days ago about this idea that people work in their self-interest. But we all know that you don't work in your self-interest all the time. Because when emotion comes into it, the wiring changes in the way it functions. And so it's wonderful for us to think intellectually about how the life of the world is. And especially those who are very smart, we can play this game in our head, but I really want to know what's driving you. And what I'd like to maybe invite you to do by the end of this talk is explore where you are today for two reasons. One, so that you can contribute more. And two, so that hopefully we can not just understand other people more, but maybe appreciate them more and create the kinds of connections that can stop some of the challenges that we face in our society today. They're only going to get magnified by the very technology that's connecting us because it's making us intersect. And that intersection doesn't always create the view of everybody now understands everybody and everybody appreciates everybody. So I've had an obsession basically for 30 years. And that obsession has been what makes the difference in the quality of people's lives? What makes a difference in their performance? Because that's what I got hired to do. I got to produce the result now. That's what I've done for 30 years. I get the phone call when the athlete is burning down on national television and they were ahead by five strokes and now they can't get back on the course. And I got to do something right now to get the result or nothing matters. I get the phone call when the child is going to commit suicide and I got to do something right now. And in 29 years, I'm very grateful to tell you I've never lost one in 29 years. It doesn't mean I won't someday, but I haven't done it. And the reason is an understanding of these human needs that I want to talk to you about. Um, so when I get those calls about performance, that's one thing, like how do you make a change? But also I'm looking to see what is it that's shaping that person's ability to contribute, to do something beyond themselves. So maybe the real question is, you know, I look at life and say there's two master lessons. One is there's the science of achievement, which almost everyone in this room has mastered to an amazing extent. That's how do you take the invisible and make it visible, right? How do you take what you dream about and make it happen? Whether it be your business, your contribution to society, money, whatever it is for you, your body, your family. But the other lesson of life that is rarely mastered is the art of fulfillment. Because science is easy, right? We know the rules, you write the code, you follow the, and you get the result. Once you know the game, you just, you know, you up the ante, don't you? But when it comes to fulfillment, that's an art. And the reason is it's about appreciation and it's about contribution. You can only feel so much by yourself. So I've had an interesting laboratory to try to answer the question of the real question, which is what's the difference in somebody's life if you look at somebody like those people that you've given everything to, like the, all the resources they say they need. You gave them not a hundred dollar computer, you gave them the best computer. You gave them love, you gave them joy, you were there to comfort them. And those people very often, and you know some of them I'm sure, end up the rest of their life with all this love, education, money and background, spending their life going in and out of rehab. And then you meet people that have been through ultimate pain psychologically, sexually, spiritually, emotionally abused, and not always, but often they become some of the people that contribute the most to society. So the question we got to ask ourselves really is, what is it? What is it that shapes us? And we live in a therapy culture. Most of us don't do that, but the culture is a therapy culture. And what I mean by that is the mindset that we are our past. I want to talk to you today about unclutter your mind. We're tempted to live guilty because of past mistakes bitter over what didn't work out. We wonder why we don't enjoy life, why we're not passionate about dreams, why we can't sleep at night. It's because our mind is cluttered. You weren't created to live worried, guilty, bitter, upset. If you're going to reach your destiny, you have to clear out the clutter. You can't stop negative things from coming, but you can keep them from staying. You don't have to hold on to it. When we make mistakes, guilt will come. Condemnation, telling us how we don't measure up. You can hold on to it, go around down on yourself, or you can let it go. When you go through a disappointment, something doesn't work out, you can hold on to it, live discouraged, or you can let it go. When the medical report is not good, when the contract doesn't go through, when you're in a legal situation, you can hold on to it, live worried, thinking, what am I going to do? or you can let it go. You can clear out the clutter. You can get rid of the negative things that are stealing your peace, taking your joy, draining your energy. The scripture tells us to guard our minds. 
You have to be proactive when it comes to keeping your mind in peace because all through the day, there's clutter. There's noise, there's jealousy, there's hurts, there's offense. They may come, but you don't have to hold on to it. Reinterpreting our past, understanding and knowing that we can move from where we are, that we can begin to design the kind of life that empowers us, that gives us happiness, that enable us to be on top of who we are, knowing that as we begin to explore new horizons and new vistas in life, that as we begin to, to focus on developing ourselves, as we begin to elevate ourselves and not to follow the crowd, activating the thinker in us and dis disciplining and putting on hold the emotional part of ourselves, And so the fastest way to change your identity, to change your belief, is just to flat get to work, to flat get there earlier, to flat leave later, to just make more calls, see more people, be more relentless, just pour ourselves into the work, because actually the hard work can in reverse impact our identity. And that's what begins to happen. When you start to do those things they won't do, you begin quietly to change your belief, that you begin to believe, oh, I deserve to sit at the table with these other people who do the things other people aren't willing to do. 